Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have another oscilloscope here from Gotti Fix. If you're regular viewers, you will know that I actually looked at a scope meter from this brand before, and it was really quite impressive. I'll actually link to that review video and I have some very important news coming up in the next minute or so, so just keep watching a little while. I was then asked if I would review another one of their oscilloscopes. So the original one I looked at, which was a scope meter, had a 12 megahertz bandwidth. This one is 80 megahertz. This one is effectively a proper oscilloscope. So this has a multimeter and the oscilloscope has a separate BNC connectors. Whereas the one I looked at before was a meter which had a scope facility. Now I said there was something very important and the good news is involving the Gotti Fix LG303, the one I reviewed previously. So this scope meter worked very well. It is quite literally an oscilloscope, signal generator and multimeter, all just using the meter probes. This is a really useful tool for using on site. The multimeter performed well. You can just go to the video description and see the review and the scope given the constraints it uses the meter probes it was working up to 12 megahertz and it worked well and this is a really very useful tool especially for on-site work and the great thing is you can now win one of these for free the giveaway will be on the 28th of april so towards the end of this month and we're going to do this on the live stream which is affiliated with learning electronics repair so this will go out on the 28th of April at 5 p.m. This is London time, London, UK. So whatever time that is in your part of the world. It's a time when I know most of you can actually get online. The reason we're going to do the giveaway on the live stream is basically so that we know each person has only entered once. The way we're going to do this is get onto the live stream, come into the chat, live chat, and just say, I want to win. We have your username. And we'll have an empty bag to start with. We'll show you this is empty. And everybody who says, I want to win, we will read out their name. We'll write a little piece of paper with their name on, put it in the bag. So you'll know you've been entered. Everybody will know they've had one chance to win. And at the end of the live stream, we will do the draw. Whoever's name comes out, you've won the multimeter. And Gotti Fix said they will ship that included to anywhere in the world. So no matter where you are, you have the chance to own one of these great little multimeters for free. So there is another great reason to join us on the live stream on the electronics channel. The name is on the screen right now on Sunday, the 28th of April at 5 p.m. London time, UK time. OK, now let's have a look at this. So I was asked to review the multimeter. Comes in very similar packaging to the other one. We have um, meter probes. We have like a clip on type probe, BNC. We have a scope probe. Charging lead, the manual. And this is the LG304. Now, some of you regular viewers, the sharp-eyed ones, will actually know that I've looked at this scope meter previously, actually about eight or nine months ago, on a different brand name. So this is actually identical to the ET829. That was the tooltop meter that I looked at. I made a very in-depth review of that, and you can find that easily on my channel. So if you recall that review, you'll know that it's performed very, very well. It's a dual channel oscilloscope up to 80 megahertz with quite a capable multimeter built in as well. The great news is today that I have a special offer on this multimeter. So when I reviewed this, it was around 160, 170 euros, something like that price. I have a 25% off code in the video description right now. 
you can order one of these and with the 25 percent off it comes in at something like 115 dollars so this is a great opportunity to buy one of these if you were interested in it before but thought the price was a little bit too much so let's have a look at some of the basic features i won't do another in-depth review of this i will give you the link and then you can see for yourself how well this performs and if you're interested in that special offer 25 percent off as i say just get into the video description below Let's have a look at some of the features I really like about this scope meter. And one or two niggles, as always. So the first thing I'll mention is that the keyboard on this is kind of like a rubbery thing. The best way I can describe it to anybody would be for those who are old enough or are into their retro gear enough to know about the Sinclair Spectrum computer. So that had like a rubbery keyboard that was affectionately known as a dead flesh keyboard. And this kind of feels the same as that, but not quite so tactile. So it's much firmer with the Sinclair dead flesh thing. When you press the key, you kind of felt it go downwards. With this, you don't really. At the moment, I have the multimeter set to bleep when I press a key. You can switch that off, by the way. You don't have to have the bleep on. To switch it on, we hold this button in for a second or three. Now, this feels squidgy, this one. It's like a squidgy button, the best way I can describe it. It doesn't take very long to boot up, and straight away, we're in multimeter mode. So, this is showing us, for the range we're on at the moment, DC volts, where to connect the probes. The display is this thing that I dubbed as the Space 1999 look. That's a sci-fi series from the 1970s. If you watch it, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from on that, yeah? So, yeah, Commander Koenig's multimeter, I think. I quite like this. It's bright and it's easy to read. But I guess this is very much down to personal preference. I mentioned the multimeter leads. The leads that come with this are fairly standard. Also, the screen is quite reflective, but I do have very bright overhead lighting on my bench. This is quite a hefty thing to hold. It's not heavy, but it's quite bulky. I don't have particularly large hands, so I don't feel that comfortable holding this, not for long periods, I am sure. For short periods, yes. But, save having to hold this or lay it flat, this has a little built-in stand. Actually, that gives me a very clear view of the screen. It stops the reflection from my overhead lights. Obviously, it will depend on the lighting around you. But I find it very comfortable to use this way. So, I'll show you some of the features that I did like about this, as I mentioned. At the moment, I'm in multimeter mode. So, we have the reading. That's just a little bit of background millivolts there. And we have some buttons so we can see voltage, percentage, hertz, AC and DC. We can see diode, capacitor, continuity. This is current, AC and DC. And we have one here that's marked AWG. So if we press the V button, which is the one we want anyway, actually, we can see we have DC volts. And then on the little menus, you see AC volts. So you just press the button. Hertz, duty cycle. So although this is a touch button control meter, it actually makes it very simple to navigate. If you want to go to another range, say for example, continuity, you press the bottom button. So we now on resistance. And again, we have here ohms, diode, bleeper and capacitor. So it's very simple to just step between one and the other. We may as well have a quick look at the other ranges. So we have the amps range. Again, you notice it shows you where to connect the probes. Okay, now this has a milliamps in it. 10 amps range at the moment. We're on milliamps, DC milliamps, AC milliamps. If we go to DC amps, look, it's showing you to change the probes. That's quite handy. Certainly helps you to remember what you should be doing with the meter. Okay, so that's quite nice. AWG. Well, let's try this. 
This, in actual fact, is the built-in signal generator. So with this, is a very similar operation. We have type, frequency, voltage peak-to-peak, -peak, and duty cycle. So, for example, we can go to ramp. This is a triangular wave, frequency, and then we can put into the box. So we can effectively set this to a frequency. It's on 22 at the moment. Let's set it to, say, example, yeah, 11. So we can see 11 here. And we just navigate down and across, and we can say kilohertz, okay? And there we have, set to 11 kilohertz, voltage peak to peak. So it's actually quite easy to use. You can see the voltage peak to peak are actually preset values, 5 volts. So it's quite easy to navigate around this, actually. So that's the basic operation of the function generator. And then the scope. So to get into the scope, we just press channel 1 or channel 2. This is a dual channel scope. So we now on channel 1, channel 2. Now I've noticed straight away with this that the channel 2 has come up as yellow. On the other version of this I reviewed, channel 2 was in red. And I actually commented why is it red the trace because against a black screen the brightest color effectively is white and after that it's, it's cyan and yellow okay those are the brightest colors so I didn't understand why we would actually have a red trace well it seems that they fixed that so I don't know if that was from my review or maybe somebody else along the line it's probably just a different firmware so this actually is somewhat different from the tool top meter that I reviewed, at least in that respect. And I suspect there are probably other small differences as well. So this is basically how we use a scope. Let me just connect a signal for my signal generator. This is the input for channel one, channel two. And you can see there we have something on the screen. Now we have the auto button, which would effectively let the meter set itself to what it thinks are the best settings. But let's have a see if we can do it manually. So you can see I'm pressing the side to side. This actually sets the time base. And then the up and down arrows will alter the amplitude. So we can set this manually. We can also go to auto. Give it a couple seconds and that's the auto setting again when we're in here we can quite easily change the time base and the amplitude on the screen it's showing us down here the volts per division and the time in microseconds in this case per division so that's basically how we would set the scope i find that quite easy to use it's fairly intuitive again what I will mention is that we have some menus in the scope. So to get to the menus, you press the channel you want to change the settings on. So we say channel one, and then we have here, you can see coupling AC or DC or ground. Okay, we have the probe type, one times, 10 times, 100 times. There's a bandwidth limit on or off. And then the fourth button takes you to another menu. So we have here position, virtual, horizontal. Give you an idea, if we go to position and we set that to on, what you'll find now is that when we move these arrows, rather than changing the time base and the amplitude, it actually moves away from. Okay. And now it's still in that same mode. So we can move in the waveform sideways. I can move it up or down as well. Okay, to get back into the mode we were in before, again, just press the channel and then F4, go back to position, off. Okay, if you wait a few seconds, this will then just disappear, the menu off the screen, like so. And we, now we can alter the time base and the amplitude again. So that's the basic operation of the scope on this. If you want to change the trigger level, just hit the trigger button here and then we can set it to rising or 
four way gauge, auto, there's a few different modes we can use. Single, normal, auto. This is what you would normally find on the oscilloscope. We can change the actual level and then up or down we'll actually move the trigger level. You can see the little red arrow here at the side, so that's actually just changing the trigger level. So once you've found your way around this, it's fairly intuitive to use. It's certainly not the worst user interface I've used, okay? Let's attach the scope probe on the other channel and we'll connect this to my RF signal generator and see how well it works. Okay, I have both traces active now. You can see I'm just touching this one with my finger to get a little bit of mains noise or interference there. Firstly, let's just go on to single channel mode and let's set the signal generator to the highest frequency. So with this generator, I can go up to 10 megahertz and with my other one, I can go up to around 250 megahertz. So let's see how well this works at higher frequencies. Okay, so that is set to 10 megahertz. Let's hit the auto, see what it thinks of it. Yeah, straight away it's got that. So we're on 10 megahertz setting. And it locked that very quickly, actually. If we want to display parameters on the screen, we hit the menu button so we can display various things. Let's go for volt. Okay, voltage peak to peak, for example. Menu to come out of here. We can see quite clearly there the peak to peak voltage. I can change the amplitude on my generator. Okay, so you can see that's fine. Let's see if we can display more than one parameter at once. So we'll go back into menu. Time. Okay, I'm just pressing enter. So I'm using up and down arrows and enter to select things. Frequency. Okay. And then menu to exit, menu to exit. Yeah, and we can see there. So we have the amplitude, we have the frequency. And that's working, I think you'll agree, quite nicely at 10 megahertz. Let's go to a higher frequency. Okay, I now have my RF signal generator attached. It's currently set to 7.2 megahertz. I still have my other signal generator attached at 10 megahertz. I have this currently to trigger on channel one, the green one, but we can set it to trigger on channel two if we like. So we can switch here between channel one and channel two triggering. I'm now triggering on channel two. I'll just adjust the trigger level. So to do that, we go back into trigger mode and we use the arrow. The little arrow at the side, I'm just pressing the up. Yeah. So I'm now clearly triggering on channel two, the yellow one. And you can see it there with the data displayed. So now let's increase the frequency on my generator so we can actually go up to the next band by pressing the band button on this that's 10 megahertz okay i'll take channel one off for now just for clarity okay so we have that let's go up now this signal generator by the way this rf generator doesn't give a very good sine wave at least at the lower frequencies because really it's a clock gen that's being used as a signal generator but we'll press the band again to 11.76, sorry, 11.78 megahertz. We go up again, 13.63, go up again, 14.1, 15. It gets a bit more sine wave-ish at the higher frequencies. 17.655, 21, 525, 27. This is your CB radio band. And we can see we nicely triggered on that. It's showing the reading very nicely here. Let's go up again. So we should be able to go up to 80. That's 28.4. That's 50 megahertz. Okay. Now the next preset is 100. What does it do with it? Well, that's beyond the range of the scope and actual fact. So let me change this back down to 80 so i can actually do that manually 
Here we go. So I can just go one megahertz at a time. We'll take this down to 80. 80. So that apparently is the limit for the scope. It looks like my signal generator has a little bit of a DC offset. Let's see if we can change this to AC coupling. Or for that matter, let me just press the auto button and see what it does with that. Okay, well, in fact, auto did the job, even with the DC offset. And that is just about managing at 80 megahertz. So this is the rated maximum for this scope. And in my opinion, it can just about do it. So that's quite decent, actually, for a device like this handheld scope. Let's have a play now with the multimeter. There's a few features I liked about the multimeter on this, so let's review those as well. One of the first things I always test with the multimeter is the diode and continuity mode. So, diode continuity, we're on resistance range at the moment. This is on auto ranging, so it takes a few seconds to settle down. That's quite normal. I'm more interested in the diode mode, this one. So what happens if we short the weeds? Well, it goes to zero. That's basically what you expect it to do. Okay, diode. This is a normal silicon rectifier diode. Reads 0 0.6, doesn't bleep. Okay, so this is what most multimeters do in diode range. Now, shot key diode will be lower, 0.19. There's a little bit of a lag. It's not the fastest I've seen. It's obviously reading them. What I would like it to do is to make a single bleep when there is a diode junction. And then in continuity mode, which you're going to try next, I would like to get a continuous bleep on continuity. So... Now that is fast, the bleep, you can see is much faster than the display. This is pretty much a normal multimeter, to be honest, even on my fluke meter. But it's the sound that I'm merely taking notes of. I'm not really looking at the display. Okay. That's interesting. That double bleep isn't me kind of like slipping, it's like what happens when I touch the probes together. Yeah, you can get like a single bleep and then... Continuous. In diode mode, I'm guessing this multimeter just won't read the diodes and it won't bleep. Doesn't bleep, okay. Doesn't read the diode, that's my skin resistance just making it do something a bit surprising really maybe it wasn't so that just reads open and continuity what i'm really looking for here and i've showed this many times is this and it's not just the fluke that does this there are some other cheaper multimeters that also do it so I go to diode mode, okay, and I get short continuous bleep. You can see this is responding quite a bit quicker. Yeah. I get shot key diode. Let's put it the right way round. Okay, shot key diode, I get a short bleep and a reading. Okay. And we go to a regular silicon rectifier diode. Short bleep of the reading. So that's what I'm really looking for. So few meters do this. I don't know why, because when you're probing around on a circuit board, you know straight away, have I got a semiconductor junction or a short, or is it effectively high resistance or open? Okay, so I can't really knock any marks off because so few meters do that, but it's such a simple and useful thing. I don't understand why the firmware can't be changed to make that happen. Yeah, got you fixed. Any of you guys who do this, you're onto a winner because this is a feature that all repair technicians want. 
and so few multimeters out there will actually do such a simple thing okay so that's just for me a hint please make us a multimeter that does that okay in fact go one better we had a project on my channel together with debt left amends from debt build stuff called mr bleep and we made a little standalone and plus built it into a cheap multimeter that actually went one step further and gave us a higher frequency tone on the Schottky diode. In fact, here is our modified, very cheap multimeter. Let me just show you this. So, diode range. Okay, I'm in diode range. Watch, guys. Short. Continuous bleep. Okay? So you can rectify your diode. One blip in a reading. Okay? And the shot key. Higher frequency. Yeah? And a reading. We did that. So this ain't so difficult, I think. For all those interested in that, I will put a link to the Mr. Bleep project in the video description. Okay, now let me show you something I really like about this multimeter. I really do like this. This has differential readings. It does it in various ranges, actually. But I'll go into the ohms range. Okay, ohms range. Now, here is a resistor. I think it's 27K or something like that. I didn't actually look. We'll find out. So, 21K, okay, 21. That's with my fingers on. Yeah, 21K. If we now press the trigger button, it shows us here relative 21.54. That means I can actually now take another one and it will show me the difference between the two. So I can see that this one is about 1K lower. And I think that is really, really useful, guys. We could also do this, for example, on voltage range. So, volts. I'll just connect my bench power supply, which is at the 5 volts. And we're reading 5 volts, okay. Press the trigger button. We have the relative reading. Now, if I increase the voltage on my bench power supply, which I'll just show you on screen. So I'll turn this up, say, to 5.1 volts. Probably easier if I use the fine adjustment, actually. But you can see what the meter's doing already, yeah? So... It's actually showing me the difference between the current voltage and the one which I hit trigger, the one I saved, the relative at 5.03. So, there's a number of uses of this. One would be maybe imbalancing some circuits or you adjusting one circuit to equal another. Yes, you can remember the reading or write it down and then set the other one to be the same. But this is so nice that you can actually effectively tune it to zero, which means there is zero difference between the stored reading and the current one. Yeah. That, I think, is rather useful. Very nice if you're trying to trace, for example, uh, something like uh, amplifier repair, where you have two identical channels and you can't find any obvious faults when you're probing around. You can see by taking a, a reading hitting trigger on one channel, go to the other channel and see if there's any difference. That I really like. I hope you guys like that too. I think all multimeters should do this. They don't all. I think all of them probably should do this. So yeah, let me know what you think, guys. So that is the Gotti Fix LG304. As mentioned, I have reviewed basically the same meter with a different brand more in depth so i will give you the link to that this does have at least one firmware difference in the core of the traces of the oscilloscope i think that makes it much easier to read than the previous one i tried 
Something I will mention, I mentioned this on the other review, and the same applies with this one. These scope probes are kind of recessed into here, but they're only recessed so far. Now, why is that important? Well, this scope meter, you could use this, for example, on live mains equipment with no isolation. Things like switch mode power supplies and inverters, okay? Now, you can take readings safely you can connect the ground of this to the ground of your switch mode power supply the hot ground which you can't do with a bench oscilloscope if it's grounded you'll just blow something up quite likely your oscilloscope and quite likely need a new pair of trousers as well afterwards okay uh, so uh, you can do it safely with this in that respect the only problem is that you can still touch the the metal work and I'd like to see that recessed a bit further just make this more level so that you can't as easily touch that it's okay if you know about it and you understand what you're doing but I would still prefer that to be just a little bit safer you can get scope probes with like a plastic cover here over the metal part of the BNC which makes this sort of work safer again that's this type of BNC connector but unfortunately with this recessed area the way it's designed those won't actually fit in yeah it's not far off they just don't fit in and to me that's a little bit of a missed opportunity if you just made it so you could fit these or just recessed it a little bit more i think you would increase the safety of this when working on those sort of circuits okay but this is not as bad as quite a lot i have seen all the screws are in Dented, so I say, set inside there, yeah. So you can't easily touch anything. There is one there, but that is covered by this clipped in place. If it is in place, okay. Obviously, if you're doing that sort of work, do not connect the USB to anything grounded at the same time. And just while I mention the USB, so this is a rechargeable device. I've been using this for quite a bit of time making this review and you can see the battery is still on full. I didn't charge this when I received it so this is how it came in the post. So this does appear to have a very good battery life. That's something else I like. So together with its little brother, the LG303, which I also liked a lot. This is a different little beast for similar sort of work but this is a scope meter rather than a multimeter with a scope facility added on this is kind of like an integrated scope meter the scope will not give you the results you'll get from this one this is a nice little sort of no-go or go indicator when you're fault finding if you want to know do i have a signal here this will give you a much better view of the signal if you really want to look at it that's the main difference between these two and remember guys you can win one of these on april the 28th on the live stream on the electronics channel that's myself carlos and detlef which is on the sunday at 5 p.m uk time okay so hope you enjoyed that i'd love to hear from you in the comments below and really love to see you guys getting over onto that live stream for the chance to win one of these which will be shipped for free to anywhere in the world wherever you live Okay, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.